Uh, and then he has this amazing moment where he's like, we're not trying to take anything away yeah, from you. Yeah, right. We're just trying to cure, no, take not cure, Take culture fix. away. And- we're, we're not trying to take anything <laughs> away from you. We're just trying to take the Jews away from us. <laughs> <laughs> Totally different, Micah. I want to say purge. (laughs) (laughs) Exterminate. No, no. no. Solution. Okay, it's a solution. But like, it's the last. It's the last solution we're gonna have. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because somehow we mistook that for a good idea. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend, Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Glad to be here. Uh, Zeke Kyle. Zeke Kyle's all around. <laughs> it's just going to go down. Slightly downhill. offensive movie. I from, found yeah, it slightly l- offensive. A little bit. And of course, sitting 81 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Creaky pie. Sorry, sorry. It's just, <laughs> I'm just getting into character. I also watched this movie. Uh, pretty accurate. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who told? <laughs> yeah. And also sitting approximately 81 miles to my right is another friend who shall remain nameless. Well, actually, he shan't remain nameless. Our good friend Moishi Steinstein is also joining us today. Moishi, how are you? How much gold am I being paid for this show? I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This movie turned me into a racist caricature of a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> you and everyone else in it. Yeah. If, yeah, no shit. If any movie could do it. All right. So enough with the tease and tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched the unexpected bar mitzvah. Um, it's the story of how Noah and I and uh, even you other people can all find a path to heaven <laughs> if we all join the right sect of Judaism. Which is called Christianity. Yeah, that's that one. This so movie's like an anti-Semitic version of the white man's burden. It's, it's the Aryan man's burden. We watched the Aryan man's burden. Oh my god. We took it, it up. Was so bad. Oh shit. And Eli, Moishi, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the Elders of Zion, but it wasn't quite so panache, and there wasn't enough shitting on Harry Potter, you will love this movie. This is a first draft that Hitler and Leine Reifenstahl turned down. That's what I'm saying. He was like, rats instead, right? Rats instead. This is too far. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, I, okay, so before we even start, you're going to hear a lot of unbelievable shit today. It's going to be you know, phrased in the form of, and then blank happens, and you're going to be like, bullshit. I have to assure you guys, this movie truly, really exists. The shit we're about to say happens in this movie really, truly happens in this movie. I I mean, I have never written in my notes so often in a film, actual line in all caps. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Very early on in this film, I was like, oh, all my notes are just going to be the words in this movie, aren't they? The (laughs) script. Yep. I rewound this movie more times than I've ever rewound anything, not because, like, I wanted to, like, catch back on something, but because I was convinced I couldn't have heard the thing I heard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm going to feel bad if I make a joke about, like, this detail that, like, didn't really happen. And, like, every time I watched it, I was like, oh, that's so much fucking worse than the thing I thought. <laughs> that's worse the second time. Oh, holy shit. Now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Um, Yeah, I'm going to say best worst... Jewish accent I have Ooh. ever heard. One of the main characters tries to sound Jewish maybe like three times yeah, for just half a sentence. Yeah. It is masterful. We'll get there. Yeah. I'm I'm gonna nominate this film for most groups offended because it somehow manages to fucking clear the Jews, the Native Americans, Filipinos, <laughs> the entire state of South Dakota in the oh, first yeah. six minutes. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Yeah, they were going for the all square, yeah. Um, can I go with most casual miracle healer? I mean, <laughs> spoiler alert, there is a miracle healer at the end of this movie and nobody gives any fucks. <laughs> no. He's just nope. like, no, 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 but here's the best part. You ready? He's fucking into Jesus now, huh? How about that? <laughs> Wait, he cured someone's MS, but he's into Jesus now. Into <laughs> Jesus. Also, I want to go with least understanding of the Jews 
from people who obviously claim to be Jews or ex-Jews of whatever kind. Absolutely. Hitler would have watched this movie and been like, come on, that's not true. Even I know that's not true. (laughs) It's also, there's a lot of moments, and we'll point them out as we go, and Moishi, maybe you can back me up on this. There's a lot of moments where they obviously have the Jewish props, but they don't know how to go. <laughs> so oh, how to use them? Oh, I don't, so I don't want to give that away because it's the last scene of the movie. Oh, yes, the so very we last won't see the movie. They don't have a fucking clue what anything is. And in my anything. notes, throughout this movie, I'm just like, the, the sentence I typed the most in my notes is, oh, look, another thing they don't know what is. Yeah. Cause, oh, and that's yeah. a repeated theme. And that's what's so crazy, cause there, it'd be like walking and having a movie where all the Christians, but the crucifixes are pointed to the right. <laughs> like you just constantly, or you've got Muslims, but she's wearing like no bottoms and a burqa on the top, like, cause they just don't understand. <laughs> right. Oh, it's so, it's like they took all of the Jewish paraphernalia to the seagull from Little Mermaid, and they're like, okay, how do you use this? Does this go in your butt? <laughs> I don't get it. That's a Jew jigger. <laughs> <laughs> A juicy one. It's the Jew. Yeah. Fl- it's the Jew flux capacitor. <laughs> that gets in there too. Well, obviously the audience has been waiting about two thousand years for this showdown, so we'll keep the break brief. And when we come back, we'll break down the bottomless pit of crazy that is the unexpected bar mitzvah. Hey, folks! Quick interlude here. Yeah, in motherfuckers. <laughs> Bam, Eli's bam, quite bam. excited. Bam, so, bam, bam. for those of you bam, wondering bam, bam. what Eli's so excited about and or who don't listen to our other show, The Scathing Atheist, we're in the process of doing a charity drive right now with the guys over at Cognitive Dissonance called Vulgarity for Charity. <laughs> Dude, are those jumping jacks? I don't know if, I don't if that's think the right that counts term. as... Anyway, uh, the, the charity we've chosen this year is called Modest Needs. Now, they're a fantastic group. They basically are a, like a GoFundMe for people who need help from everything from paying their kids funeral expenses expenses to medical expenses to just get by on the bills and unlike other fundraising sites they vet the people and they make sure that the money goes straight to the debtors so your cousin becky can't go on there and ask for new speakers and we could single-handedly clear that entire website of all its debt if every listener to our show chipped in i think i think maybe it's karate or he's he's choking. It's it's a co- man, I combination. I really don't want to know. So here's how you can play along. If you make a donation to Modest Needs of twenty dollars or more, we'll insult any person of your choosing, from your sister to Stephen Baldwin, on air in one of our upcoming episodes. Donate fifty dollars or more, and you're entered to win an insult from a special guest roaster. We've got podcasting, atheism, and comedy friends who are going to play along. And if you want to do some good while being bad, this is the best way to do it. You'll find all the details at scathingatheist.com or look for the Modest us need link on the show notes for this episode and now assuming that eli can handle it back to the show uh okay i'm 12 percent sure it's the worm now I like he's, <laughs> he's dancing back at kirk cameron <laughs> okay the unexpected bar mitzvah take one and action but son, we've always been Jewish. Cut, cut. Sorry, um, Rich. Uh, can you do it? Can you do it, Jewier? Uh, I'm sorry. H- how do you mean Jewier? Oh, uh, you know, like, uh, like Jewier, Jew, like that. Like, L- like this. Well, well, mm, Jewier though. Uh, uh, what about this? Uh, uh, almost there. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, creaky pa. Perfect. Okay. Let's go to Jews Don't Like to Hear the Truth, Part 3. Part 3. Hey, folks, sorry. One last quick announcement. Patreon now has an RSS feed, which means if you're already a Patreon, you should have gotten a link to the feed, which will allow you to play the early commercial-free version of our show on any podcast player. And to show you how easy it is, we're going to do this live with Heath on the air. Heath, are you ready to go? I am all set, I guess. Okay. What app are you using? Uh, The podcast. Cast one. Mm-hmm. App. Mm-hmm. Can you can you describe it? I use it to listen to podcasts on my phone. Is it mm-hmm. is it purple like the little man having a spider sense moment? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. All right. So now I, we just need you to copy the RSS link in the email. Uh, nobody sent me any mail. No, no email. You sent me mail. 
No, the, I, this was a bad way to show people this. It's, this it's bad... here. No, oh, okay, I got it. I got it. Okay, all right. Mail. Now, now click the plus sign to add a new podcast via the RSS feed. Okay, got it. Cool. And just paste it in, and it'll update just like the show has been, but you get it sometimes extra long, early, and commercial free. Uh, it's not working. Really? It was so easy for me. Let me see that. Dude, this is... Is this a block of wood with a flute drawn on it? Yes, it is. What? Why, why a flute? So I can tweet. And we're back for the breakdown. And before we even get started, I want to say we've got like 130 collective pages of notes here. There has never been more <laughs> crazy in a two-hour fucking movie. I want to just throw out the distinct possibility that this turns into a two-part episode. Yep, I'm okay with it. Holy I, for, shit. I, I have two episodes on the opening credits. <laughs> <laughs> God. I'm going to be talking about this for the rest of my life. So. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. Yeah, so the opening credits in question are basically windows movie maker credits featuring two tinkerbells locked in an erotic mating ritual of some sort the same mating ritual over yes. and over and over again <laughs> and if you're wondering hey does that get annoying after the third time you see it it sure does do we see it 874 more times we sure fucking do i'm told that's pleasant whatever <laughs> do, do we miss it before this movie's over you bet your ass we do <laughs> and and then we cut to we we have Abruptly cut to this living room set, and I've never managed to hate a movie earlier than I managed to hate this one. Oh, yeah. first line. Tim Tebow has done it again. <laughs> Fuck it this movie. I almost <laughs> quit. I almost called you guys up. I'm not doing this. <laughs> and it's... You're going to have to thief in the night this one, guys. You're going to have to thief in the night this one. <laughs> I'll catch up on what a puzzle and a thunderstorm means later. <laughs> <laughs> and we hear the announcer saying, that's five wins in a row for Tebow and the Broncos. So it's literally December 4th, 2011. Yep, it literally it. <laughs> has to be December 4th, 2011. <laughs> One of the two times his entire NFL career he threw for more than 200 yards. He had 202 that day. <laughs> that's... Drew Brees had that in three passes last <laughs> all week. It's all in fine. the fourth quarter, too. Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, and you have him. Mo- well, first of all, can we talk about how these people look? Because Christian Dad looks like Chucky found Jesus and settled down. He has a crazy, smooth little boy face. He looks like he requires a very elaborate cowboy play to come. <laughs> it is not good. And and Christian's son, he looks like his barber let Jesus take the wheel. He looks like Harry Potter and the Invisalign lost. <laughs> So they're sitting there, and the dad turns to his son, and he's like, like I said, son, I'm not sure I'm comfortable saying God endorses a football team. And it's not because that's fucking insane. No. It's because, you know, there are pray- people praying on both sides. And I just pictured, like, a, a Kamehameha battle from Dragon Ball Z, and they're just, like, pushing the light beams against each other. Yeah, God only helps believers. That's why he, God never helped Sandy Koufax. That was all him. <laughs> <laughs> He's the only player in the history who did it all on his own. Yeah, yeah. Well, him and uh, and uh, Arian Foster. Yeah. That's right. And Ryan Braun, but he had the steroids. And stuff. <laughs> Cheaters. A- actual quote from this movie, and I'm going to say that a lot. So get ready. Oh for yeah. It. I do believe that God has anointed Tim Tebow to bring his name into the national spotlight. End quote. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Tebow. It's also it's also worth pointing out that the thing that starts this entire scene is the kid turning to his dad and totally earnestly asking him, "Dad, do you think Tim Tebow has real magic powers?" <laughs> yes. yes, that's the thing that starts the conversation. <laughs> He's like, "Where'd you hear about that faggot magic?" No, <laughs> no. And here's the problem. If you believe in real magic, that's a tricky question. For us, that's just like, nope. But for him, he's like, okay, now when you say magic powers, there's four <laughs> types of sorcerers. They're all real, and I'm mad at three of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is also where we learn that the son, this the, the kid's name is Paul. He wants to get famous like Tim Tebow so that he can tell people in the... This is actually from the fucking movie. Yes, we're going to say that a lot. He wants to teach people in the Philippines about Jesus. <laughs> the Philippines! Yeah, it's like ministering Judaism in, in like, Jerusalem. Oh, in Williamsburg. Yeah, exactly. Take your pick. 
<laughs> Crown Heights. Yeah. I just want to spread the word of Judaism in Crown yeah. Heights. <laughs> You're less Jewish than we are. Yeah, I know. You know, the Philippines. That part of the world where they take the book seriously and we had to send other people by to be like, hey, she's kidding. Here, we're going to take that. For you. <laughs> yes. Don't burn wishes. Don't do it. I know. We came with fire and also told you that book was true. I would be confused, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Philippines hasn't heard of Christianity yet. This is a great plan. Maybe bring some unmarked aspirin pills. See how that goes. <laughs> Good luck. Oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah, it's, it's, it's literally one of the most Christian nations in the world, by the way. Yeah, I googled the exact statistics. It's 86% Roman Catholic, 6% belong to various nationalized Christian cults, and another 2% this, I didn't say that, that's literally from the fucking first result on Google, and another 2% belong to well over 100 Protestant denominations. It's well, the fourth largest Christian country on the planet. You have to try to name a place more Christian. <laughs> right. <laughs> and uh, by the way, I was thinking about this Tebow thing, and I, I was thinking to myself, why would God make Tebow left-handed? Since that's a sign of Satan, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But then I remembered he made Tebow right-handed, and just nobody he, told uh, Tebow. So <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. This is why he's been shot putting the ball at the ground for the last ten years. Yeah. <laughs> now, now he knows, though, because I know he does listen to this show. Now that's just a low pitch. That's cool. You can get a swing and strike out of that. <laughs> and now it's a slider. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was just God testing him. So, <laughs> oh, clearly, as we'll learn. So, yeah. So then, Dad wants to. He, Dad is not convinced by this whole missionary thing to to the Philippines. So, Dad gives the kid a book about the uh, about mission work in 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 Asia. This will be the first of about four hundred and six times that a dad gives a kid a book in this movie. All of them, I want to read. I no. want to read all the books. <laughs> All the books. Essentially what happens throughout this book is that fathers give their sons spells and counter spells to use them. <laughs> yeah, the more or less. <laughs> yes, people who like this book also read had a writing credit in this fucking script. <laughs> Uh, so meanwhile, there, we we cut to a Jewish family that's also celebrating the amazing Tebow comeback. Well, the the kid is anyway. The dad is angry because he will only be angry in this film until the end of the third act. And and this is where we see for the first time what these people think Jews yes. sound like. Oh God! <laughs> okay, so first of all, we need to talk about Dad, who is Jewish John Malkovich. Right? He's he's John Moylekovich. <laughs> <laughs> we learn that what this actor's portrayal of a Jew is going to be is to speak very, very clearly and <laughs> carefully when he is not shouting at his son. <laughs> and also, his beard is amazing. Oh, God. It's, it's not connected to the rest of his face, which nope. is just a weird thing. <laughs> but it's it's so Floating. over the top, I don't understand. Like, he might as well have pious dreadlocks like Jewish Predator. And like... <laughs> <laughs> and start speaking in Jewish clicks every few scenes. Like, <laughs> really? Oh. oh, God. So the son is celebrating that Tim Tebow has also scored a touchdown, and he doesn't understand that Tim Tebow is praying, so he turns to his dad and he's like, what's he doing down on one knee, Dad? Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> and Dad's like, we do not talk about him. I find that very offensive. And that's when I realized, for the first time in this movie, that they think Jews think the word Jesus is offensive. Yes. It is it is the Voldemort of the Jewish household, according to this movie. And then the 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 worst part is then the kid goes, but doesn't doesn't Tim Tebow worship the same God as us? And and the dad goes, no. Yeah. And it's the and it's the moment I realized, oh, it's not just the Philippines; they don't know what Jews are either. <laughs> <laughs> That's the central conceit of the film: is we don't know what the Philippines are, and we're pretty sure the Jews worship the sun. <laughs> <laughs> But he basically turns to him and he's like, one more word about Tim Tebow and I'll cut off your dick again. <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah, and, and of course, this is where dad, this dad also gives his son a book, but instead of it being a Christian book, it's a Holocaust book because he's it's Jewish. A Holocaust <laughs> book. We are, we are two minutes into meeting this Jewish family before they're like, how many minutes do they go before, before Holocaust talk? Two? Two? Four? Yeah. 
Jews have a birds and the bees esque talk yeah. with their children about the Holocaust. It's like, son, you're old enough now. This is what happens when we let people tell us which train to go on. You ever been in Brooklyn? <laughs> It happens at 12 because you never learn about it before. Then the dad sits you down. And he's like, it's time I told you about a man named Adolf. <laughs> <laughs> also, all of the pronunciation of this Jewish dad and of all the Jewish characters in the movie is like the Jewish equivalent of the douche who calls it mozzarella. Oh, like, yeah. It's just <laughs> fucking unbearable. <laughs> The guy who pronounces Nietzsche correctly. Um, yeah, yeah. No, and I, I want to point out, and I will have so many fucking notes on this, and I apologize in advance for this, but the sound mixing in this movie is about as offensive as the anti-Semitism. I found those two things equally <laughs> offensive throughout this fucking film. Like, the the, 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 the mom character, right? The, 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 this character whispers every time she's on screen, and in this movie, whoever's closer to the camera is louder. Yes. <laughs> My mom is constantly on mute throughout this movie, as we will learn. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, mom looks like an Irish cop going undercover in Williamsburg. <laughs> it is. Uh, she is not. She looks like Sam Kinison dressed up as Molly Shannon, <laughs> dressed up as a Jewish lady in Williamsburg. It's not Whoa, a good movie. Whoa, yeah. Hanukkah! <laughs> I wrote in my notes, she looks like the beginning of an infomercial. She's like always about to fail to open milk. <laughs> there has to be a better way. <laughs> oh, shit. And so now we go back to the good Christian family where apparently Paul just finished his book about uh, ministering to people in Asia. And it, the, the line here is just literally he comes and he's like, yeah, dad, I learned I shouldn't go minister in Asia. I should just give money to gospel for Asia. And he might as well point to a phone number at the bottom of the screen. <laughs> yeah. Right. Just an annotation in the corner. <laughs> yeah. It'll get there. This is ended up on YouTube eventually. Yeah. Click here. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I learned that brown people don't like it when we take up the white man's burden directly. <laughs> they're, they're less embarrassed when we outsource the missionary work yeah, to other yeah. brown people. We, That's what he learned in this book. We syndicate the yeah. white man's so, burden. So instead of going to the Philippines, the kid decides he's going to witness. This is a direct quote. I'm going to witness to the Jewish community. Yes. That's his new plan. To which his mom, who looks like a bad wig mannequin, says, well, honey, we don't have any, looks around and goes, Jews are here. <laughs> this, that's the performance. The performance is don't say the name too loud or they'll appear behind you. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm sorry, can I adjust the air conditioning <laughs> yeah. here? This is South uh, Dakota. They would shatter. There are not Jews yeah. here. And then, and then they offer to find him a Jew. They're <laughs> like, well, they're like, I mean, maybe we could drive a few miles. You know what? You can only have a Semite if you promise to clean up after him and walk him every day. <laughs> I'll take super good care of him. I'll give him an air conditioner in his cage. And I'll give him something to be offended about every morning. I'll get a subscription to the New York Times all on my own. Okay, all on my own. Okay, sweetie, but remember, they don't like baths. No, wait, it's showers. Showers. Showers, baths. <laughs> what the fuck? We said that, like, well, if we can't find you a Jew, how about a Native American? Mormons think they're Jews. They're like <laughs> Jews. So, but they literally, uh. they're like, well, what about the Native Americans? They don't know about Jesus. And would, and the kid's like, no, no, we killed all of them, remember? I'll take you to a Redskins game if you want. <laughs> no, and, at, and at first, same. I was super offended by that whole Native I thought I was like, why are they even bringing up the Native Americans? And then I remembered the movie's track record up until this point with, like, knowing what things are. <laughs> and I realized, for all we fucking know, they think Native Americans are like deer that's what they're talking about <laughs> we're all we fucking know these writers. <laughs> right and he convinces him at the end he goes well hey i got you this book <laughs> called 10 amazing oh, jews they thought for themselves and we're all seeing it you're not it's on amazon it's a penny i want that book <laughs> Yeah, it's by Sid Roth, and uh, spoiler, the 10 Jews were amazing because they stopped being Jewish. Yes, yeah, that's, that's the that's amazing the story. Thing, that's the book. thing they did. It's the best thing a Jew can do. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, so Dad's like, yeah, I got a book about Jews smartening up and coming to Jesus, so here you, here you go. That's how scenes end. <laughs> anyway, so now we, we cut to back to the Jewish family where the Jew kid, uh, uh, Abraham, has been up all night gobbling up his Holocaust book. When dad wakes up in the morning. <laughs> right. And by the way, it's the wall clock says 2.30. So it dad, does. dad wakes up at 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. And uh, Abe's like, yeah, I've pretty much done uh, done reading. And uh, I think I'd say that an objective observer would say that 
Holocausts could never happen again, and us Jews are being way too sensitive at this point. It's, <laughs> it's time to forget, am I right? I'm a Jew who thinks for himself. Ever forget. And they're, they're tricky enough with their language that at this point in my notes, I wrote and so did Moishi. Please let this be a Holocaust denial movie. Please let this be a Holocaust denial <laughs> yeah, movie. Yeah, we had the exact same dream. You and I had the same dream for this film. It was like, why do they hate us? And I wanted one of these characters so badly to be like, because we did 9-11. <laughs> <laughs> and, and to be clear, later on in the movie, they do flirt with that. Like, the Jews oh, yeah, brought yeah, it yeah. on themselves. And that's the movie where I fucking punched a hole through my television set. But they do flirt with that later on. Yeah, yeah no, we got there. We we don't get quite to the... the like, like, the claims in this movie are more insane than the Jews... Did nine eleven? That that is like that is would not be the most insane claim in this film if it was it's, in this film. It's more insane than like traditional Holocaust denial because <laughs> traditional Holocaust denial is at least just like I don't I I just don't think that history happened. And yeah, you're fucking wrong. But this movie is like I I think it happened, but only because God wasn't on our side enough. Yes, right, because you guys didn't listen about Jesus. Yeah, that is yeah. this. We'll we'll get there, but yes, that's where this fucking movie goes. This should be called researching for Bobby Fisher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And I love too, cause like the kids go and like, well, I don't think something like this could happen any, anymore. There's not that kind of anti-Semitism in the world today is there. And the dad's like, well, we're making this. I mean, we're trying. It's, it, it's not <laughs> we're doing catching our best. the same kind of audience at this if point. If you'd finish the fucking scene, <laughs> be that much closer. <laughs> you still have to edit it. And of course, the, the, this is also where we, like, we, we first really meet the mom where she has to get on to him for, uh, for yelling at the kid. At least I assume that's what she was whispering. Oh, and her name is Hava. Hava. Yep. Hava. I, I am 100% certain the writers started just naming Jewish words and somebody said Hava Nagila and nobody else said anything. That's and they were first like, yeah. and last, that's guys. It. We got first and last yeah. now. All right. We're just going to go with Hava though. That's fine. <laughs> Can we name the main character Tevya? No, no. We gotta choose one of the other characters from the only Jewish thing any of us have ever seen. Because you can see them imitating Fiddler at various points mm. through this movie. The three times Dad tries a Jewish accent, it's him doing a Zero Mostel impression. Oh, yeah. It's oh. not like. He might as well just be going Jews. like. Bada, 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 bada. <laughs> Would have been almost the same. So now we're going to get this great scene where the uh, the Christian dad and the and the Jewish dad meet over the phone. But before we get there, I want to talk about this weird establishing shot because <laughs> okay, it's it's such a minor thing, but just between going from the the the, the Jewish guy to the phone call for, between these two scenes, they just show what appears to be Mount Fuji for a second, just like <laughs> as though to say we know what establishing shots are. We're not going to use them anymore, but we just want to let you know we do. No, there are very few crazy billionaire money changes I would make to this movie. But one that I would is I would over I would dub over that scene. And just when the mountain appears, I would have someone go mountain. <laughs> and then just continue the scene. I would make this movie perfect for me. It's not already not perfect. No, it's, but it's pretty close. That would help. This is where people started after the flood. We do believe that part. <laughs> And okay, so the, the, what's going on here is that the, the, the Christian dad is hiring the Jewish dad to be a professor at his college that he owns, I guess. I don't know, whatever the fuck. They don't know how colleges work in these movies. Also, Moishi, be with me here. They're talking for about 30 seconds before Christian dad says to Jewish dad, I suspect that you're Jewish. <laughs> that in never ends well. That conversation, <laughs> I suspect that you're Jewish. Click. click. That's the click. moment where General Akbar walks in and is just like, <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot imagine we might not want no Jews around these parts is a legal question in a job interview, is it? <laughs> You're a Jew boy, right? <laughs> yeah, I was just explaining that there are no Jews at Crystal Lake. Yes. <laughs> and he explains, and Micah, who is totally, the Jew dad, who is totally unfazed by that question, is just like, yes, we are Jewish. Conservative Jewish. You know, with the hats <laughs> and the stuff. Occasionally with the accents or something kind of close to that. <laughs> and then he says, I need an answer by 2 p.m. <laughs> 
Well, there's a ton of like superfluous detail in this conversation as well. This movie does this for like constantly, but we hear them negotiating the rent on the house that he's going to get when they get there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's only that's only to show how thrilled the Jewish dad is about how cheap the rent is. Oh, and I'm not making that up. There's You're a right. moment where the fucking Christian dad goes, the house next to me is available for only five hundred dollars. And uh, and the Jewish dad goes a week, and the, and the Christian dad goes yeah. no a month, and the Jewish dad <laughs> fucking pops a boner and the table moves. <laughs> <laughs> you know the house next door to me is only available for fifty thousand pennies. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, one moment, four, five. It's a deal. Oh, fuck, so it gets so bad. So then, Cub, I got a bargain. <laughs> Four hundred and ninety-nine. <laughs> now the real conversation begins. Crack, crack. <laughs> So then we get, like, he's got to go tell his wife that, yes, he's got a job, but it's all the way in South Dakota. And I will admit, like, the movie does get that right. No one wants to be in South fucking Dakota, except people in yeah, North valid. Dakota. Yeah. <laughs> except this scene is supposed to be comedy, and it is so upsetting. It is Nazi community theater. <laughs> That's the only way I can describe it. Yes. They keep using Jew words, and this is the first time they do Jew voice, where <sighs> they go like, oh, gavo. <laughs> yes. and it is painful there's at one point the mom stumbles the word mashugana out of her mouth which comes out mashugar <laughs> yeah. and she's she's supposed to be surprised by like everything he's saying he's like oh it's so cold and she goes cold and he goes but I you know, I'm sure we can get a rabbi over the internet. Internet? <laughs> She's just shocked by every fucking word that comes out of his mouth. Yeah, she took performance notes from Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs> a yeah. cyber synagogue. Yeah, her Yiddish sounds it's, like uh, me trying to use ebonics. It's not, so uh, I'd be tripping constant. This snow is going to be all up in my grill piece. It's not <laughs> natural. <laughs> So now we, we head back to South Dakota with a good Christian family so that the dad can come in and basically say to the mom, remember how we said the other day that we don't have no Jews? Well, I got us one. <laughs> yeah. I found us one. <laughs> They're discussing the town getting his first Jew like it was an Arby's franchise, you know? Yeah, he's like, hey, you know how we don't have any Jews here? And she's like, how do you know we're getting Jews? And he's like, oh, there's this app on Chrome that puts their names in brackets. It's pretty cool. And then uh, mom starts getting frustrated. She's worried. She's like, yeah, but Paul, our son, he's going to be uh, undoing the Jew all afternoon. And he'll never do his homework. <laughs> right. That's a concern for her. And then this this plumber guy walks in out of the bathroom or whatever. Now, I was convinced, given the quality of the movie that we had up to this point, that that guy didn't know they were doing a movie and was just going <laughs> to kind of walk off screen and never be acknowledged. But Oh, well, fuck, you guys making the movie today? Oh. Well, toilet's still back the fuck up, so <laughs> don't get the whole crew in there to shit in there. It's clean. It's clean now. I sucked it out, but it's not. <laughs> it don't flush. He just turns to her. It don't flush. <laughs> I think he's a real handyman who did not know it was a movie, and he overheard this, and he thought they were actually bringing a Jew to town, and he was kind of pissed. Oh, is that it? So he goes outside, and he clearly calls the clan. Yeah. Without on dialing. speed dial. Yeah, yeah right, without right. dialing. Just Siri, call clan. Sell. <laughs> so now we get some Holocaust stuff. Montage. Yeah, we get a Holocaust like, like a montage. Ken Burns Holocaust montage in the middle of this thing, as though this movie were saying, "Hey, you got a great anti-Semitism on a scale. What we're doing here is not that bad." Yeah, and we we can tell because we have a little Jewish girl voiceover, <laughs> and we know she's Jewish because her V's and W's are switched. Yes, uh huh. The only way that I survived was because the bodies fell on me and kept me warm. I mean, not warm, but like, I'm still a little chilly. I could have used two or three more bodies. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> did Shtetl have to fall that far away from the rest of the pit? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm, I don't think he did it on purpose. I'm saying how I feel. So apparently, and, and the reason we're getting this, I guess, is that the, the son is reading this this Jew book about all the Jews that smartened up and came to Christ, and now he has to ask his mother about the problem of evil. Why would God let the Holocaust happen? Great question. 
Yeah. Yeah. So good. And her answer is, well, you see, God gave everyone free will, and the Nazis used their free will to do bad things. Mm -hmm. To which the little boy replies, well, why didn't God protect them? At which point she says, ask him yourself, jingly fucking keys. (laughs) What a great question. Here are these keys. Those are yours. Just shake them back and forth for as long as you like. <laughs> Literally, she leaves the room going, you tell me when you figure it out. Yeah. yeah. I'm a good mom. I did a good job. I'm a good mom. I did a good job. Her exact response, I think, is, that's a question I've wondered about my entire life. And my note on that is, I don't believe you. <laughs> So now we get the Jews arriving in South Dakota. Yeah. They're really blown away by the majesty of this <laughs> one room house in South Dakota. And the Jews, they come in the house and they close the door and there's like a crucifix there. Yes. And they all react like fucking vampires. <laughs> all of, they're all like, yeah, creaky pa! <laughs> creaky pa! And dad immediately pulls it down and we see that it's connected with Velcro. I was so happy. I laughed, I laughed for a good minute when I saw this. Well, and also like th- his landlord is the dad that hired him and said, you sound Jewish. I mean, like his dad knew that a Jewish family was going to live there and put that or left that crucifix there anyway. Yeah, it's furnished, not Jewish furnished. At least it wasn't burning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, well, exactly. Count your blessings. Also, he immediately starts to adjust the heat. Most realistic part of this movie. <laughs> so, and, uh, so the, the, the son, Abraham, turns to his dad and says, well, there's not a lot of Jews around here. Should I start spreading the word of Junus to all of these poor Christians? To which the mom's like, nah, it's not tell a lot of people we're Jews. And I wrote, that's probably a good plan, honestly. Yeah. Don't hiss. Just, <laughs> make sure you don't hiss. Yeah, man. I was, I was raised with that. That's a very real thing, by the way. I was raised with the like, don't tell, when you're in certain situations, like, don't, don't mention you're Jewish. Don't say anything about being Jewish. And I'm realizing the reason why is because of fucking movies like this one. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Because you fucking go to college and you're like, yeah, I'm a Jew. And people just start putting cloves of garlic on their neck now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I said I was sorry. OK, <laughs> you surprised me with it. Can you flout? <laughs> <laughs> Do a backflip. No, that's not. Yeah, oh, wait, the, wait. Wrong. The, wrong so. yeah, the other one. Yeah, definitely not uh, the Jews that you're thinking of. So now we've got to randomly meet Sarah. Um, who is the love interest for Abraham, and you know because they just meet in the street, and she says, hi, I'm the love interest for you. And he goes, oh, that makes me the love interest for you. Right. And he says, you talking to me? And I wrote, run, Sarah. He's going to pull a gun out of his sleeve. I've seen that movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, but that was a good movie, and this is a different kind of movie. And it- This is an intro to an underage porn, right? Like, it's shot like an underage porn. It's it's scripted like an underage porn. There's just no Serbian man making these children fuck each other <laughs> on camera. Like, I'm sure it happened yeah, off well, camera. It, like, in I my head, it wasn't just actors. an intro. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. I wrote in my notes, go, go with her, Abraham. Sarah can show you something that Jews don't know about. Blowjobs. <laughs> <laughs> She looks like the first girl at your high school to get pregnant and be proud of her. <laughs> I'm going to name her Angel because she came from an angel. No, she came from your 21-year-old boyfriend, Mike, who wears a monster hat to church. Oh, my God. Did we go to the same high school? <laughs> I'm starting to think we all went to the same high school, yeah. And so now now we get to Abraham and, the, and, and Sarah walking through the woods. When along come the Nazi twins. Oh, Yay. and their first line is one of the greatest <laughs> in Christian <laughs> movie this cinema is real. history. This is real. Is this the little Jew boy? <laughs> Followed by... <laughs> Never seen a real Jew before. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. Yeah. another They've seen the wax in ones in the museum, <laughs> <laughs> but not live. They actually don't get Comedy Central in South Dakota. No, they just, <laughs> clearly just don't get not. it, so... <laughs> <laughs> and to be fair, this is on Abraham. Jews know not to let people lead them into the woods at this you point in history. Think. You just got a book on the Holocaust, <laughs> Abraham. This is on you. 
And of course, Sarah has to go all after school special. I'm guys, bullying isn't cool. You know, I expected a fucking giant puppet to come out and start singing with her at that point. <laughs> right. A giant anti-Semitic puppet, just like a stereotype. <laughs> it's me, Doidle the Dreidel, here to tell you about bullying. <laughs> I'll burn you with my laser eyes. <laughs> all right, this is this is number one on the crazy billionaire money list now. It's moving all the way up to the top. Um, but they're they make it very clear that they're going to rape them. And I want it so badly just to flash cut to an Israeli helicopter bombing these kids' homes. It's like shouldn't have shoved the kid. We get a little extreme now. <laughs> Yeah. We're a little sensitive to this kind of stuff, right? So they're they're about to like fight the the Paul and the girlfriend, and this is the this is another actual quote. One of the twins, I don't know what the first one's name is. He says to the other one, "Hey, Larry, why don't you go ahead and take him? I'll occupy the mouth for a little while, and then if you need some help, <laughs> I'll join in." Are you yep. fucking kidding? They got this script from a rejected gangbang video script and forgot to change it. Are you serious? He he also says this will be a message to the Jew boy, and I just wrote in my notes a message to the Jew boy is the name of my Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. One man show. It's playing next week. If anyone wants to see it. So, but luckily for Abraham, that right before they're about to beat him up, the Christian kid Paul shows up to save the day and does so by pushing both of them lightly towards the people they're beating up. As he hey hey yeah got it cut it out cut it out. Shoo. Yeah, that's Shoo. It. It, it's a Power Rangers fight without the low budget like fight. Yeah, right, right. It's the start of a Power Rangers right. fight. Yes. We just needed those bullies to go. <laughs> <and explore. laughs> also, those bullies could have killed all three of them. Like Paul's a full head shorter than both of the bullies. And they're like, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore, man. Like, well, it, well, their reason. Oh, right, is, there is a reason. I'm yeah, sorry, you're right. Uh, there is a reason. They did make this make sense. You're yeah, right. Well, I don't know about that, but they made a reason anyway. <laughs> you see, Paul's dad works at the college, and so if they beat him up, right, his dad will call the cops on them, as opposed to the Jewish kid who will just be buried in the backyard like a hamster. <laughs> what do they think? <laughs> My mom called the cops for me watching this movie. <laughs> Oh God! I you know I knew that there were things happening. I knew I should have been writing notes about them, but the whole time I'm just writing. They didn't even put a goddamn windscreen on the microphone. This is disgusting. <laughs> uh, I wanted the bullies to go beat up the sound guy. Um, so they spent all that budget on the oversized yamakas. Uh, oh, I see. That's I would I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was walking around with a goddamn windscreen on the back of his head, going, "This is what they wear, right?" <laughs> It's fluffy. This is a fl this is a Russian one, I think. So yeah, so I'm ready to guard the queen. <laughs> Do you know all the queen's guards were Jewish? That's why they don't laugh. They give their laughter to all the other ones, like Woody Allen and the other ones. <laughs> So, yeah, so now the kid wants to know who outed him as a Jew. I guess that's when we're supposed to connect it to the plumber scene from earlier. Yeah, he says, how did they know I was Jewish? And Paul's like, uh, I don't know, maybe your face, your your Jew face. Sorry, sorry, your Jewish person face. <laughs> yeah. been did they, no? did they do anything with calipers beforehand? <laughs> no. you people, that's a dead giveaway. <laughs> you feel this notch in the back of your skull, Abraham? <laughs> <laughs> And then, and then Paul drops his book yes. that he's reading out yes. of his bag, and and uh, Abraham's like, "Oh, hey, you dropped your book. Um, wait, did that say building a fourth Reich? Okay, later, bye. <laughs> no, <laughs> not exactly, but close. Yeah. So now we get we we go back to the the uh, Jewish mom and dad who, and again, the dad is angry because he's on camera. So he's angry this time because mom has inv accepted an invitation to go have dinner with the Christian couple because these are the only four people that live in this universe. Again, this really speaks to the like not understanding that how Jews work because he goes, well, do they have? kosher food they know we need kosher food and she's like well she said she would be very careful about our dietary <laughs> needs and i was like really they have a kosher kitchen yeah. really what? we got two sets of plates separate <laughs> milk and meat yeah i can't have bitter herbs and salt water to represent tears i'm not going <laughs> this is not happening <laughs> They didn't know what the entire nation of the Philippines is. <laughs> what, what, what fucking 
part of you, what part of you, Eli, believed that they were going to get anything close what to what the did kosher, kosher means? Have? <laughs> so now we cut to the dinner where we're going to start off by saying grace in Jesus' name. <laughs> yeah. God in heaven, thanks for this delicious bacon-wrapped lobster. <laughs> Jesus was killed by the J- Romans. Amen. <laughs> It's like they listened to my diatribe last week or something. <laughs> uh, and then it basically Paul's like, Dad, can I bring Abraham to my room so we can touch each other in the place we're most ticklish? And he's like, okay. And Micah's like, Tiki pa. Tiki pa. <laughs> well, and of course, this comes after a like a, literally a 90 second musical montage of just those people eating in silence. Yeah, to the music you you hear when you get into a sandals resort. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, this was a lot more exciting than like 15 minutes of reading we've already seen in yeah, the movie. Yeah, no, so. we get multiple They read in the movie. <laughs> we will end up missing that. Oh, shit. We will miss the slow jams of this Jamaican tune. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> a, a montage of any activity in which every moment of the activity looks exactly the same is a stupid fucking <laughs> montage. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like there's a point where we have a montage of the kid reading and we just hover yeah. over the book for <laughs> a really just, long time for like it's nine just seconds. Different, it's just different angles of the book. <laughs> it's it's a, right. That's a scene, not a montage. Yeah, just it's a terrible, terrible time terrible hasn't scene. passed. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so now the, the two kids go back to uh, to Paul's room where they bond over a Tim Tebow poster. And, oh, and again, this is the other establishing shot they have in the movie. They show the moon, so we establish that it's night. And when they cut to that shot you actually have the outdoor microphone sound of the no wind screen for the second that the moon is on screen why like for fuck's sake people have some decency just mute it just mute that fucking little clip oh the moon is this outdoors. is where noah drew the line in yeah. this movie this is a lot about you not good things by the way <laughs> This film is as offensive to filmmakers as it is to Jews. I, I, I believe so. Or anyone who records audio for a living. Yeah, no shit. So, yeah, so they see, they're like, oh, he's like, oh, you got a Tim Tebow poster. That's awesome. Who's this fellow with the long hair and beard standing amongst these sheep? Yeah. Is it the single most famous character in all of history and fiction and nonfiction? In, uh, and he's literally, he's just like, I don't know, some guy. See a character from Harry Potter I miss? <laughs> yeah. Well, as a Jew, I can confirm I neither recognize Jesus' picture, nor am I allowed to say his name. That's actually why they cut off your foreskin. Oh. You, get it, <laughs> you get it back if you can make it to 40 without saying the J word. <laughs> oh. That's the deal. <laughs> Yeah. Mad at you guys now. Made me read the Bible. Said it too much. Ah, I'm almost gonna get it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then of course, this is where the 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 burning question on the lips of every Jew comes out. He turns to the Christian kid and he goes, "Why does Tim Tebow risk everyone hating him to talk about Jesus?" And I wanted the kids so bad to just go, "He's an asshole, total." <laughs> but he's asshole. like, "Yeah, no, it's it's tough for Christians here. You people don't know my, very much about persecution, but it's really <laughs> tough." <laughs> For Christians me. here in America and the Philippines. You see, he has survived an assassination attempt when he was minus eight months old. So. <laughs> <laughs> After that. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we're not, we're not exaggerating even a little when we say that the, the great, like, battle of this film is not between good and evil and it's not between judaism and christianity the like actual battle within this movie is genuinely between harry potter and tim tebow (laughs) (laughs) that is the existential struggle this film (laughs) seeks to resolve (laughs) not in one moment in many many yeah exactly over and over again Holy oh, shit. How great would it be if Tim Tebow was in Slytherin and they had a fight? I would love to watch that. Do you think that. Tim Tebow knows that he's the opposite of Harry Potter? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Oh, I want to go to the universe where Harry Potter's real and Tim Tebow's a boy. <laughs> <laughs> This is also when he asks, they're talking about his, he's like, hey, can I borrow your book about Jews who became Christian? And he's like, yeah, there's this one story about this lady who gets holocausted, uh, but then Jesus made her not care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Did you die in the Holocaust? <laughs> At which point the Jewish kid goes, it's hard to be Jewish and not have like 80 members of your family having died in the Holocaust. 
all of us died in the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> Which is especially weird, considering that ten minutes ago in the movie we've established that the kid had never fucking heard about the Holocaust it, until right. he got that book. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I love, too, at this point, because, like, the, the Jewish kid goes, like, yeah, my dad told me the people who did all of that stuff, the Nazis, they were Christians. And the Christian kid goes, oh, but they don't count. And the kid, Jewish kid goes, oh, good point. Good yeah, point. I didn't th- think about it like that. These conversations are absurd. Paul says, so, like, what do you think about the true Scotsman fallacy? These are kids. And Abe's like, <laughs> yeah, I agree. That means the Nazis weren't Christian. Cool. Yeah, we're 12. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> what? The exact quote is, Christians don't murder people. And my only note is... Bullshit wrapped nonsense burrito. It's yeah, right. fucking and the movie and the movie spends a lot of time unpacking that fucking burrito. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, as as though they have no idea how circular their arguing argument just became. Well, it's the point at which we realize they also don't know what Christians are. That <laughs> you just get to add it to the list of the things. <laughs> So now dinner's over. We go back home uh, with the uh, Jewish family, and this is where Dad once again re- randomly remembers his Jewy accent. How does he choose which times to do that? It just hap- <laughs> it happens for sh- these short little bursts, and then it goes away. I think you had one of those. You ever seen that ad for that dildo that's on like uh, someone else's iPhone so they can activate it? I think every time the director activated the dildo that was inside him, he was like, "Boy, <laughs> we homeschool you now." Uh, uh, uh. He literally turns into one of the three stooges he goes soydenly that's literally the line he goes yes. soydenly yes he does like a little tip of the hat a little dance <laughs> he just tries to poke his Blocks son in the, the eyes yeah exactly, yeah exactly also abraham's like can i go to school today and they're like no we told you we're gonna homeschool you and then they just fucking leave <laughs> <laughs> Well, go learn some shit. The people who made this movie watched Fiddler on the Roof, and their only note was, Jews are suspicious. God. <laughs> <laughs> Just the word suspicious underlined over and over again. Spell with all S's, yeah. So, and then we cut to uh, Paul praying to unjew his neighbors. And then the camera pans up to his Jesus poster, and I wanted so bad for the Jesus poster to just wink. I got this. <laughs> I got this. Or like the shifty eyes from Scooby Doo when somebody's yeah, watching. You. Right. So now we're gonna cut. We're gonna go into one of the most bizarre series of scenes I've ever seen. This is gonna happen three times in a row. We're gonna watch the Jewish kid wake up from a bad dream and then go tell Paul and Sarah about that dream. And. Abraham's first dream is that Harry Potter and Jesus get into a wizard fight, (laughs) but but Harry Potter's no match for Jesus, and this is actually what happened. Anna, who is as much a Harry Potter fan as I am, turns to me and goes, how dare you bring this trash into our house and left the room? (laughs) And my notes are like, I think my wife's actually mad. I think my wife is actually mad that Harry Potter lost the fight in this movie. We don't say Tebow in this house. Also, while the kid's dreaming, he makes the same noises the South Park kids make when they dream. Like when Cartman's <laughs> dreaming, he's like, eh, 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 oh, the Jews, no. <laughs> Stupid kitty. And then once we establish this, we cut directly to him waking up from his second dream. Yeah, having another dream about a moil with chapped lips. <laughs> <laughs> And then we cut directly to him in the exact same place telling the exact same two kids about this dream. Yeah. And yeah. this time, Abraham almost got stabbed by his dad. D- d- you guys read the book wrong. It's it's in the Christian one, too. Like, that's <laughs> just you have it reversed. Well, and OK, so this but but then he's dreaming of the Abraham and Isaac story. But just before his dad brought the knife down, his he, he turned into Jesus and his dad stabbed Jesus. So the Jewish kid yeah. literally dreamed that his Jew dad was murdering Jesus. <laughs> also, he can't remember the name of the story. He can't like remember like how to refer to it. He's like he's like, uh, you know, I had a dream. Uh, you know, the, what, the one from the Bible where the son kills the, you know, the one where, where they buy all the lottery tickets and Monica spills them off the roof. His baby's really mad. <laughs> That's the one. Also, it's a good Moishi, one. we do not celebrate, well, I, I shouldn't say anymore, but we do not celebrate during Rosh Hashanah the story of 
Abraham almost stabbing Isaac, right? You can't you can't see my eyes, but if you could, I'd ask you to look right into them. I do not <laughs> fucking know. I but I never heard I, it, I right? No, it was apples I don't and know, honey. Maybe. <laughs> apples and yeah. honey in New Year. Rosh yeah. Hashanah is the Jewish New Year. Yeah. No one was ever like and then one time a guy was like, I'm crazy, no I'm not. <laughs> yeah. Ever my entire childhood. No, I'm, and I grew I, up I, around I, super Jews. I went to Jewish private school for for uh, nine years, and I that's not in my head. I, I'm hesitant to say like no because I'll feel fucking stupid later. But I'm fairly <laughs> sure that story is not like super relevant to that holiday. But if that kid had been like apples and honey, we would have been like we apples and fucking honey. We would have been we would have been in. <laughs> I'm glad we got that all cleared up. So, so then we Paul got three explains. Jewish listeners who are loving that. Noah. Three <laughs> yeah. Jewish listeners are loving that shit. No, no, they're sending me emails going like, no, actually, they're on the Rosh Hashanah holiday. We do celebrate it because, but at, at any rate, so the, that's where you got the voice from. Noah's impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> No one directed this. I, film, I was guys. his dialect coach. <laughs> we were starting to run low, man. The list was starting to get a little thin. We couldn't just do a Cristiano Brothers movie every week, so I needed this. So oh, there's the movie we should make. It's about Christian movie reviewers who run out of Christian movies, so they start <laughs> making them in secret. God awful movies. The movie. Oh. And then we get a third Abe waking up from a bad dream scene opening in a row. And I just wrote, okay, is the rest of this movie going to be him dreaming and waking up to tell his friends? Oh, right. I just wanted these dreams to get wackier and wackier and wackier right. until, like, Bozo the Clown has a fucking dick fight with, like, Moses on the mountain. <laughs> It's just a flash cut, and it's just like, and Scarlett Johansson had like four mouths, and he's like, that one's not in the Bible. Oh, but the other seven were. Mm -mm. And, to, and to be fair, the other kids are sick of his shit two dreams ago. <laughs> yeah, like two yes. scenes ago, the girl, he's like telling the girl, and he's like, I know it sounds crazy, and she's like, yeah, Abe, that's fucking nuts. Yeah, that's fucking stop. nuts. <laughs> tell you get less cute every time you tell me about this. <laughs> Yeah. So and, and and so the the third dream though the that he has is about the nativity scene which he has never seen apparently he has to describe it and I'm like oh he's never been to a courthouse after October. Yeah. Uh so so Paul invites him he's like hey man you've never seen a nativity scene before and he's like no and he's like well I've got some pictures at my house and and chocolate cake and they're like <laughs> cool cake. Yeah, I didn't know Christianity came with cake. Yeah, movie. This movie's a lesson for all Jews. Chocolate cake is how they get you. That's how they get you. My only note on this scene is the cake is a lie. <laughs> well, it is. It is though, because we follow him, and he never makes with the goddamn cake. They make such a big deal of saying like, "No, I have cake," and then they don't have fucking cake. Instead, he goes into his kitchen, and he's like, "Where is that?" It's like he's looking for cake, and he pulls out a goddamn nativity photo. Okay, he ha they this family keeps a large photo of the nativity scene in their kitchen drawer for quick access. <laughs> yeah, if what? you need to open a can or something. <laughs> right. He basically turns to the Jew and he's like, look, man, humor me. You're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says. It gets so fucking intense. Too. This is the first scene in the movie that seriously stressed me out because he delivers this scene like a scene from the day after tomorrow. He's like, he's like, you know what? You know what, Abe? What if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? What if this is the end? Yes. Like, it's this kid acts his little fucking heart out. God bless him. And this is the first time, but not the last, that Abe worries that if he finds Jesus, his dad will kick him out of the house. Now, look, like Jews. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying I Googled Jews kick kids out of house and Jews kick kids, apostate Jews, found zero results. I found I, I Googled gay Jews kicked out of house. I found a documentary from the 80s about Hasidic <laughs> Jews who were then later accepted by their parents who like had a five minute fight with their parents. The people kicking their kids out of the house are not the Jews. Just to be clear, I also looked up those search terms, but I checked in Pornhub, and I also did not find any results. <laughs> so this is where we get the Googling slash reading montage that literally goes on for two minutes while we watch these two kids read. <laughs> literally. Paul's Googling the Jews, I'm assuming. <laughs> and top of the list, top of the list, the Jewish Superstore. 
the ju- what do they sell there? What, what do you, do, have you guys ever? I have no idea. And he also found a site where I buy everything. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> the prices are amazing. <laughs> and uh, he also found a site called Holocaust Best Pictures. Yeah, what? And it's not about Schindler's List. It is Holocaust like the coolest photos. Really. <laughs> Also, the sequence of events in this scene, this is the moment where I genuinely lost. This is the moment where I almost punched a hole through my TV because the montage plays and it's a picture of a Holocaust victim followed by a passage of text in the book saying, I thought it, I was a good person. I never killed or robbed, but God, yada, yada, yada. Yep. God punishes those who don't love Jesus. You can yep. read it in the text if you read, if you pause it. <laughs> And Terrifying. I just lost, cause this, that's the fucking thing. That's where the movie just stopped being like stereotypes and started actually flirting with the notion that the Jews brought it upon themselves through their self exclusion and the rejection of Jesus. That, that's where, that's where it really starts swimming in the pool of go fuck yourself. Well, yes, yeah, yeah exactly. They literally, and I, I realized it at, the, at this exact same point that they were literally uh, like, like sewing in this like undercurrent yeah. of yeah, but the Jews kind of deserved this. Yep, yep. And yeah. and meanwhile, Abe is reading the Ten Amazing Apostate Jews book, and he's seven chapters in. Right now, he's on the chapter about Dr. Michael Brown. Yes. Dr. Michael Brown is the worst. He's like Michael Savage, but also super anti-Semitic. He started a society that tried to get the entire country of Israel to apologize for doing that and repent yes for for murdering (laughs) jesus yes yes that's who's in this fucking book oh i can't wait to read it don't (laughs) spoil it for me (laughs) sorry i would have loved to have been a fly on the wall when like netanyahu got that letter from him (laughs) (laughs) so you know so abe still has some questions though he's starting to really come around to this whole jesus thing so he goes home to pray to god it's so crazy. He's like, hey, God, first time, long time. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I'm a Jew. Uh, what should I do about that? And God literally starts talking to him. He talks back. Oh, yeah, he does. <laughs> yeah, he fucking does. <sighs> Yeah. And by the way, the God voices, it's clearly the Christian kid's dad. It's clearly Could that. not yeah. more clearly be the, he should, honestly, I expected the camera to point over and for him to be in like a sheet with two holes cut in it. And just like, <laughs> 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 I it's expected me. everyone in this movie to be in a sheet with two holes cut in it actually yeah. at some point. Or fucking through a sheet like that. Yeah. <laughs> One or the other. <laughs> the second hole is for your birthday. oh shit so yeah so dad starts talking back and by the way okay so i'm gonna do i'm gonna do all this in post you guys won't hear it but here's a better god voice this right here that was more than they did (laughs) to make this voice sound like there's like a vague kind of an echoey sound yeah it's just him going oh whoa whoa <laughs> yeah, he might as well be eating a sandwich. He's like chewing and hard <laughs> chips. And what's crazy is like, you know, every other movie I've ever seen with God, God always kind of talks in grandiose metaphor, yeah. kind of wants you to solve it for himself, you know, gives you some direction. He is so fucking explicit in this movie about like what he wants from this kid. He basically comes down and is just like, hi, I'm God. I hate Harry Potter, but I fucking love Tim Tebow. <laughs> 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 He's so clear. You're gonna get like Tom that? Tom of God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Get a new library card. Stop being Jewish. That's pretty <laughs> That's much all it. you got to do. There's are his, his instructions. So, so after he speaks with Paul, we go back to him uh, meeting with Paul and Sarah, who are as sick of hearing about his dream bullshit as we are. And he's like, No, no, no. I didn't have a dream this time. This time it was a psychotic break. Yeah. I I went into a trance, and instead of his friends being like, "Oh, the nurse," we take you to the nurse. They're just like, "Wow." <laughs> And and he's like, well, God says rebellion is witchcraft. That's what he told me in my message. And he's like, I, I, but I'm not rebellious. And the, the other kid's like, are you a witch? He goes, well, I'm a Jew. Um, and I honestly <laughs> thought that that's where they were going. I honestly thought they were about to say, well, Judaism is witchcraft. But no, it was because he, it's because he has Harry you Potter can't say stuff. It. Yep. It's not less of uh, insane. It's just less offensive. 
Go- it's definitely more insane. Yes, it's definitely more. <laughs> and Fuck more you! It's to definitely. Anna. It's yeah. definitely more insane. <laughs> we could be witches. <laughs> we could be. Uh, but we could be witches more likely than someone who doesn't exist. Yeah. <laughs> we are infinitely more likely to be witches. <laughs> so, oh, that needs to be Jew's new catchphrase. <laughs> infinitely more likely to be witches than Harry Potter. <laughs> My favorite part of this is at the end, Abe asks Paul, maybe we can pray a bit on it tonight. But like, it's already late. Like, I think he's just spending the night there and there's only the one bed. And my only note is Abe is working way harder to fuck Paul than he needs to. <laughs> Abe's been down to fuck since chocolate cake. <laughs> and I have to say, watching these kids pray, that's like the scariest thing that I see in these movies is when they show kids praying. Oh, yeah. And their prayer is fucking terrifying. They're like, God, I love you. I surrender my life to you. I'll cut my head off with a fucking piano (laughs) wire. It's like, ooh, you are nine. You are nine. It's like they're fighting for who can say the most self-deprecating thing to God. It's like, God, I would totally give up all my comic books for you. I'd give up all my comic books and slam my dick in a door for you. I already did that. I'm Jewish. (laughs) I'm just so grateful we didn't get a montage of it. (laughs) (laughs) And then as they're praying, at the very end, uh, Abraham just adds some weird words. It turns out he was speaking in tongues. Mm. Yeah. And I was like, or, or <laughs> parcel tongue. In my opinion, in my opinion, at this point in the film, they have offered more evidence for Harry Potter than Jesus. <laughs> Oh my god, how great would it be if you just cut to like a snake entering the room like, hey, go- oh, oh, no, you were just, you were just talking to God. That's fine. Hey, maybe choose a different language next time. I came all the way from Texas. <laughs> Not a short trip. I took a flight here and I took, I flew United and those seats are tiny, even if you're a snake. It's fine. It's no big deal. I just got a, I got a red eye back. <laughs> are you yeah. venomous? I want to pick you up and test something. <laughs> And what's fucking phenomenal about this is Paul freaks out. Not Abe. Abe starts speaking in tongues, but Paul freaks out. And what you realize in this moment about the movie is this is like one of those horror movies where some asshole kids like pretend there's a monster to scare the other kids. But then it turns out the monster is real. Yes. Because Paul's reaction is like, what the fuck was that, dude? I just wanted to touch dicks. You weren't supposed to (laughs) actually speak in tongues. You close your eyes and when you open your eyes, I'm kissing you. What the fuck is this dead language shit? Yes. It becomes very clear that Paul was just fucking with Abe. Also, you guys were pretending earlier you weren't picturing the child porn, and and now you're clearly talking. I'm just saying. <laughs> also, sure. There's one point where the uh the kids like uh the message I got it's Deuteronomy eighteen ten and Noah. I know this was your favorite part of the movie. So they go and check the Bible, and the Bible's like witches are bad, y'all. <laughs> and so we watch the kids. Figure out, like, the fucking Goonies that what they need to do, the solution in this movie, is to burn books. That's where we land! The kids- No, it's not where we land, it's the stair that we start to well, climb right, right. towards the yes, end of the crazy no, that is this movie. No, we never land. Yeah. To be, to be fair to this film, though, I did not see it coming. <laughs> like, you can say anything you want about this movie. You cannot accuse it of being predictable. No, that is true. That is true. Yeah. They decide that they're going to burn their Harry Potter books, and they talk about it so erotically. I just like, no wonder people fuck kids. I was a towel rack at this oh, point. They're just like, oh, yeah, we're going to burn that book, and the fire shall keep us warm. Yes, brother, the fire <laughs> shall keep us warm. He's just got his hands running down his chest. <laughs> Shit. I'm just saying I'm into it. I'll get, like, what, two days in jail, three days in jail? No. Oh. Unfortunately, well, you could become a Catholic, and then you just get a you get a nice little retirement plan. No, have you guys seen me swim? <laughs> <laughs> How are you with sandwiches? Can you make a sandwich? <laughs> so we cut now to Abe cleaning out all that satanic Harry Potter stuff in his room when Dad shows up, and Dad's right, like, and- "What are you doing?" He's like, "Clary, clean out the Harry Potter stuff. I don't like it anymore. I like God more." And at first, Dad is pretty stoked about that. Yeah. yeah. And the, but then he gets a little suspicious. He's like, "Wait, uh, 
are you and Paul doing gay stuff? And he's like, no, no, no. He's like, thank God. Good, good, good. Yeah, but, he has a big moment where he's like, are you gay? And it's like, oh, yeah, Jews, super homophobic. That's why there's all those homeless <laughs> kids wandering around Crown Heights. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's Utah. That's Utah. <laughs> No, it was important they balance out the Judad character. He's not all bad, you know. He's homophobic. <laughs> he hates gays correctly. So, Maybe that's it. We can all agree on that. We can all agree on that. But then he says, no, Dad, Jesus Christ is my Messiah. And he's like, ah, good one, you got me. And he's like, no, really, he's my Messiah. At which point, his father <laughs> tears open his shirt Rends and screams, his <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I expected him to angrily light candles after I'm, that. I'm, I'm confused at this part. He, he finds out that his son is a Christian now and he yelled a, a blessing. I mean, <laughs> the, the translation is, blessed are you, Lord our God, king of the universe who brings forth bread. It, is that a reasonable thing to be yelling there? Isn't that like well, a, a good it's thing? Like, it's like a Christian dad in a movie yelling, We wish you a Merry Christmas! We <laughs> wish you a <laughs> Thank you! you. Okay. <laughs> you know, what the fuck? Well, a lot of people don't know this, but Baruch Atad and I, when yelled at that pitch, actually translates to, You're tearing me apart, Lisa! <laughs> 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 um, and, and then they, I guess they decide that they're gonna have to send him to Jew York to be rejewified by a Jewish deprogrammer. Oh yeah, I've heard of those. I've heard of those. I've heard of those. <laughs> no, you haven't. <laughs> yeah, that was my backup career. Jewish <laughs> deprogrammer. <laughs> oh. And man, do they hit that Jew York thing over and oh, over yeah. again. Over. They're like, oh, when you get to New York, which has lots of Jews, <laughs> you will, when you get around New York, huh? That Cuomo fellow might be. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> that man's got a black wife. What? I'm not, I didn't say, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just pointing it out. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you, Eli, but when I left home, my mom was like, you're going to be a lawyer, you're going to be a doctor, or you're going to be a deprogrammer. <laughs> Those were the three choices I was offered. Oh, yeah. Get my son a good Jewish deprogrammer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's important. So then they ship him off to Juilliard or whatever, because dad doesn't want to have a traitor at his house. So as the audience desperately catches their breath while incorrectly assuring themselves that this has to be the craziest this movie gets, we'll pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell can paul fix the jews will this movie flat out call judaism a tool of the devil which of these characters will wind up with literal magic powers before this thing is over <laughs> find out questions. the answer to these <laughs> questions and more when we return for the somehow even less sane conclusion of the unexpected bar mitzvah and that's when i prayed and the holy spirit cured her ms son that's fantastic yeah, God is good. I, I, I don't give a fuck about God. Get your coat. Come on. Uh, what? What? Where? Uh, where are we going? To to the hospital, son. Look, I don't care if your healing powers came from Vishnu or Satan or fucking Santa Claus. You and I are going to the hospital where you will cure people all day, every day for the rest of your life. Uh, what? Uh, Look, maybe the Holy Spirit is blah, blah, blue. Maybe you got bit by a radioactive spider. None of that matters. All that matters is that each moment you spend for the rest of your life until you die, not healing people who need it, is evil at the highest level. From now until you either run out of magic or die, you will be healing people whether I have to shock uh, the healing out of your testicles to do it. Uh, oh, uh, you you know what? I just remembered that uh, there's a joke, you see, because um, I'm... Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go to my room and read uh, some Harry Potter, cause oh, it just oh, it was a joke. Okay, are you There's, sure? Yep, yep, very sure. Um, you had a car battery ready, didn't you? Oh yeah, better safe than sorry. Gotta be prepared. Do you have nipple clamps? <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit, and we're going to start off with Abe coming downstairs for one of them magic Jew rituals, except for since he likes Jesus now, his dad won't let him join in any Jewy games. Yeah, son, you cannot do Shabbat anymore, where we <laughs> light candles? <laughs> Man, do these people not know what Shabbat is. They know it takes place near the fireplace, and they're just sort of generally waving their hand. They got a menorah and like a ham with a big Ghostbusters symbol on top of it. They, they, the only thing they're pretty sure about Shabbat is that it's a thing that we take away from our kids to punish them. <laughs> 
that we withhold Shabbat. <laughs> oh, man. I remember the first time I got in trouble bad enough to get Shabbat taken away. I don't want to talk about it. Oh, it's it. the worst. You go to your room. You leave all the lights on. <laughs> you play. You turn that TV on right now, mister. <laughs> Yeah, well, and then, but then the kid starts arguing with him about the Savior and everything and the Messiah, and he almost unjews his dad, but but only almost. Yeah, mom's like, you can't argue with his logic. Yeah, he lands that great zinger, remember? He gets that great <laughs> yeah. joke in on his dad. <laughs> oh, right. And Can I tell it? Yeah, Can I please, please tell, tell it? Please tell it. Please tell it. He goes, he goes, dad, you know as well as I that if you put 50 Jews in a room, you're going to get... Fifty different opinions. Fifty one. Fifty one. Fifty. Oh, I fucked it up. I fucked it up. God damn you can't it. tell the next so joke. I'm sorry, <laughs> man. You, you had your one and uh, didn't pass. To be the fair, test. I I thought when he was like, if you put fifty Jews in one room, I was like, you get the Holocaust. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what I get. that's what I thought too. I was like, oh man, I remember how this. Yeah, ends. tell him it's a shower yeah. and guarantee that took a few takes. It's like if you put fifty Jews in a room, that's a. Uh, a good start. Wait, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you get 51 of it. And mom, she almost starts laughing at the really funny joke. She has a lot of truth. She's like Chris Farley, David Spade, almost cracking with the Matt Foley thing. Oh, so good. And she's fantastic. She goes, she goes, stop it right now. You don't want to provoke your father on Shabbat. Like when it's Shabbat, that's when you're, you won't like him when he's angry on Shabbat. <laughs> you won't like me when I'm holy. <laughs> There's also one really good line at the end of this scene where he turns to her and he goes, you better get used to not having a son just in case. Like, <laughs> yeah. like you're going to fucking take what? him out back and shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wanted him to go just like God didn't, remember? <laughs> He's got the Jesus rabies. This I has wanted so end. badly for him to have a, like a glass box in the corner with a big, long Isaac-shaped knife <laughs> <laughs> break in case of apostasy. <laughs> <laughs> so meanwhile, of course, Sarah and Paul have been trying to research what happened to Abraham when he when he went into his trance or whatever. Um, and but now, so so they, they they go into this church, and the preacher here, the priest that they go to talk to, a pastor, whatever, looks like Billy Bob Thornton, fuck Gallagher. <laughs> he really does. I, I have him as Billy Bob, Billy Bob, Joe Bob Thornton. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, the most linear of family trees, and they need some help with a Jew. And to be honest, this looks like the kind of guy you'd go to when you need help with a Jew. It's true, yeah. And they basically say, so can we borrow some books on going crazy for just a smidgen? <laughs> and he goes, well, I can arrange that, but I must warn you. Actual <laughs> quote. And I wanted him so badly to be like, nobody who ever goes up there ever comes back down again. <laughs> well, he tells him, you better not be using those books to get a spiritual high. <laughs> he thinks that they're just going to fucking go in this room and like, just get off on Jesus yeah, for an hour. Just off him or something. Then, yeah. <laughs> I'm also very proud of the fact that he's like, okay, well, if you're not going to use Jesus for your honky tonk and your rock and roll, follow me. <laughs> and all of us have some version of raped right yeah, after right, they right, this yeah. creature. Dude, everyone in this movie tries to fuck Paul. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> so we, then they, we get him leaving. And we have this l prolonged conversation between the two of them trying to figure out which denomination of Christianity is correct at 12 years old. Oh, but the girl <laughs> yeah. accidentally stumbles on the true thing for a second. Yeah, she's, yes, like, she's like, I mean, they can't both be right. They could both be wrong. And I wanted the movie to just explode <laughs> in my DVD player yeah, and start right. to leak out in the front. What's crazy is every fucking Christian movie and every single movie you guys do all have moments like that, like moments of perfect crystallized lucidity and then some character is like nah, nah I don't forget about that shit <laughs> jingly keys and Paul I just I have to point this out Paul says at the end like he's like man this is so rough now I know what it's like to be a persecuted Jew like Abe yep like, that's what it's are, fucking are, like are, are, are you I wanted two kids in the line for a gas chamber to turn to, like a flashback to two kids in the line in a gas chamber to be like, yeah, but can you imagine what it'll be like to be a Pentecostal having to explain to a, a, a Baptist? I think a Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> At least we don't have to sell cake to gay people. This isn't bad. <laughs> Look, we get these cool tattoos. Huh? <laughs> oh, mine's got a nine in it. <laughs> That's good. Come on, luck. they they gotta eat those stale wafers. <laughs> yes. 
I'd rather eat nothing than a stale wafer. In fact, that's what I eat right now. That's what we eat. We hate nothing. <laughs> So then uh, we, we get uh, Sarah and Paul. They just happen to walk by as Dad's shipping Abe off to Jew camp. Yeah, and Sarah's like, it's okay. He's probably just going to a farm upstate where he can run and play with the other Jews. It's just air conditioners on every wall. He can just adjust and adjust. Yeah. She said, her exact line is, I'm sure he's going on a trip somewhere. Yeah. Equals a thing Germans literally said about their Jewish oh, neighbors God. circa 1939. Oh, man, they are putting him on a train, too, aren't they? Holy shit. <laughs> this gets really bad. Oh, no, no, no. They're all going to be together. It's going to be this. <laughs> yes. They'll get a nice shower. <laughs> they I like mean, to I, live amongst themselves. What's funny is we're all doing an impression of the Germans, but we're all doing the Jewish accent still. <laughs> I don't have a good German accent. I don't have a good Jewish accent either. But for this movie, by this movie's standard, I've I pretty much got it nailed. Oh, you you one of those fucking Jews, bro? Are you one of those fucking Jews? Huh? You one of those fucking Jews, bro? It's like being in Berlin. <laughs> <laughs> so now we get what I believe may just be the most insane scene in this entire movie. This is this is where. Abe's heading off to be rejewed, and he meets a burly old strange, a burly old touchy feely stranger. Jew Who for puts Jesus. his arm around him? Yes. Oh, the the scene opens with this man's arm around a child. Yeah, the, this man that this child in this movie doesn't know, does yeah. not know. It's so jarring. You you actually do like pause it for a second and go, wait, we we met this guy earlier, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you have to remember that you didn't, because this is just the shit that happens in this world. <laughs> yeah, the first thing he says is he first thing that this is the order of actions. He puts his arm around this strange child and goes, "Hey, I'm sorry to bother you, but God wants you to listen to this song." Yeah, what? <laughs> God wants you to listen to my demo tape. <laughs> my note here is: I feel like God wants me to gently caress your sweet milky buttocks <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's so uncomfortable put in these headphones and smell this rag <laughs> <laughs> pull this trail of ipods and candy to my van and, I'll tell you all, <laughs> Shit. Uh, and it turns out he's a christian jewish christian he's a, he's jew, a jew for messianic. jesus yes. uh. There's also this phenomenal moment where he's talking to Abraham about, like, how difficult it was to come out to his friends and family as a Jew who believes in Jesus. And Abraham asks him, he's like, was it hard to come out to your family about this? And I swear to God, like, you can almost hear the echo inside the guy's head, like, oh, no, it was way worse when I came out for being a pedophile. That was a much, <laughs> was a much, much more difficult conversation. Oh, the New Testament was nothing compared to the Nambla membership card, let me tell you. <laughs> I did get to introduce them to Donald Trump, though. <laughs> So now, of course, we're an hour and 15 minutes into this movie. Great time to meet new characters. So we're going to now meet a whole new family of, uh, of Jews. This is Abe's cousins in New York that they went to, se that they sent him to meet. Yeah. And here's, so there's a little girl. She's in a wheelchair. And this is how they broach this subject. <laughs> I remember my cousin. I just don't remember her being in a wheelchair. <laughs> what? <laughs> He's such a dick about it. Abraham's like, oh, hey, cousin Rebecca. Where, hold on. Weren't you, uh, Taller last time? Was <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, I'm in a wheelchair now. That's why. Jesus might have crippled me. We're not sure. Something like that. <laughs> well, and also the kid goes like, Abraham goes like, oh, yeah. And they're like, yeah, no, she has like a terrible disease and she's dying from it. Uh, don't you know about that? We told your dad. And he's like, oh, you know, I've been busy. I wouldn't remember <laughs> shit like that. You, know? you guys want to hear a dead language? <laughs> Got important shit going on. Don't bother me with this multiple sclerosis nonsense. The only note I have on this scene is when he first comes in and the mom is like, why don't you come into the kitchen, Paul? My only note is why is everyone in this movie still trying to fuck Paul? <laughs> <laughs> but again, proof that these people know nothing about Jews. Jews do not feed people peanut butter and jelly, okay? That's something we invented for the poor to feed each other. <laughs> 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 the worst nut and grapes we don't want anymore. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. That's like my dinner two and dinner three right there. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got to go back to uh, to Micah and Hava, the uh, the uh, couple that just kicked their kid out. Um, and dad is looking for a new job so he doesn't have to l live around Christians. I'm like, <laughs> where the fuck are you going to go to a Muslim country? Where the fuck are you going to find a job with no Christians? Right. <laughs> 
this is also where me and Moishe both have fantastic notes about the quote unquote Jewish decor. Oh they my god. They obviously went to the Cracker Barrel at Christmas, <laughs> went to that corner that's reserved for every religion that isn't Christianity, and we're like, look at this, a star? Huh? Yeah. And they don't, they don't um, know what anything is, dude. They've got a menorah upside down or like facing out from the wall, and they're like, oh, it's a coat rack for eight tiny mouse coats. <laughs> I told you they had mice working for them. Pay up. Pay up. You said they couldn't control mice. There's like a mezuzah on the fridge. (laughs) There is literally... In this living room, just a star of David hanging off the fucking wall. And then the the set guy went, there we go. The set is Jude. (laughs) This is post Hobby Lobby and they shot in Tennessee. That's why that actually happened. (laughs) And, and Micah basically explains to Smooth Face Dad, "You made my son a k- 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 you made my son a k- 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 Christian." Like he's trying to say the pen is blue. <laughs> the, I really felt bad for Micah in this scene because he's so he's genuinely like, you know, man, it really bums me out that like your son kind of like kept harping on my kid, and now my kid's a fucking Christian. Like that's a big fucking deal to me. And he's talking to, to fucking Chucky Dad. And he's like, you know, there are some Christians who don't proselytize to Jews, which is like his way of like really trying to get this guy to apologize. And Chucky Dad is just not fucking hearing it. Oh, no. Chucky Dad response is, I'm not your enemy. Satan is. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he's literally like, yeah, there are some Christians who don't have the balls to do it. I am the one who knocks. <laughs> <laughs> he brings down the fucking hammer. <laughs> I want you to take this wager. It's a Pascal's wager, if, if you will. will. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's going, and he's, he's like, well, just walk with me for a second here. What if your religion is bullshit, right? They just, just, just hear me oh. out. If your religion is You're- bullshit, then if I let you be a Jew, I would be evil, wouldn't I? And they compare it to the fucking Holocaust. Yes! They compare it to the fucking Holocaust. And well, wait, because so he goes, oh, and by the way, I don't believe in your devil. And I wanted so badly for a cut to the corner where the devil's like, oh. But he goes, I don't believe in your devil. And he goes, yeah? Well, some people don't believe in the Holocaust. Look at these charts. Look at the low levels of cyanide on these bricks. What a weird thing to say. Why would you bring that up? I want to just like walk walk you through the transitive property of this scene because literally the exchange is, you know, some people don't believe in Satan Chucky Dad, and Chucky Dad's response is, some people don't believe in the Holocaust. Now, not believing in Satan is what Judaism essentially is when you include Christ, but it's a, it's a part of Judaism, not believing in Satan. Right. What the essential theme of this moment is, is Judaism is like Holocaust denial. <laughs> That's the fucking argument. That's what they're saying. Being a Jew is like saying the Holocaust didn't happen. Point served. <laughs> that's, that's, and that is exactly where they're going. Because why the Ugh. fuck else would you bring it up? There's evidence of the Holocaust, y'all. Yeah, there's there's no museum where you can look over a wall if you want to and see a bunch of videos of the devil, like, telling people to touch their dingle. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, if there was, Eli would know about it. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> I wrote, I literally can't tell anymore if this movie is arguing that Satan is real or that the Holocaust isn't. <laughs> <laughs> or what would be more offensive at this point, I, honestly. Can it be both? <laughs> <laughs> what if the devil's main job is to keep you Jewish? That's what he movie. says. <laughs> yep. He says that. He's like, what? but what if the, yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you're, you're just barely paraphrasing that. <laughs> and, and, and at one point in this conversation, the dad says, to, he turns to the Jewish dad and he goes, you know, sometimes you Jewish people act like, and I, I stopped the movie there. There is no good end in that <laughs> sentence. I racked my brain for 15 fucking minutes. There's no good way to end that. But he says, sometimes you Jewish people act like it's more important to be Jewish than to find God, which translates to sometimes you Jewish people act like we Christians aren't right. Fuck off. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh my god the crusades the movie <laughs> fuck uh, and then he has this amazing moment where he's like we're not trying to take anything away yeah, from you right. we're just trying to cure no take not cu- culture fix. away and- we're, we're not trying to take anything away from you we're just trying to take the Jews away from us <laughs> 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 
totally different, Micah. I want to say purge. <laughs> Jesus. Exterminate. No. 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 Solution. No. Okay. It's a so, solution. A final like, it's the no, last, that's it's me. the last solution we're going to have. <laughs> that's on me. That's on me. I should have, the word solution rung a bell and I thought it was a positive one, but it is not. <laughs> <laughs> And so now we, we cut back to Jew York where, where we meet back up with Abraham and apparently they've brought out a rabbi to could to like talk him out of his Christianity. By the way, the brother looks nothing fucking like the dad, like Micah. Oh, Did we ever a, talk about that? They look nothing no. fucking alike. Oh, well, they gave one, they gave a half-hearted try to make one character in this movie look Jewish, and no one else looks remotely Jewish. Not, not even Jewish. a little. No. Not even a little bit. The rabbi they got was like the guy who plays Santa in their community. They were like, hey, Steve, well, you still got that beard. How do you feel about playing a rabbi? And he was like, another gig? I'm in. But to be fair, when even when Hollywood has like, millions and millions of dollars to spend to find like an attractive Jew for a movie they still go fuck it get Eric Bana <laughs> <Right now. laughs> that's true <laughs> to be fair to this film <laughs> so yeah so now Abe comes out to meet the rabbi won't shake his hand like a dick I mean like yeah. does it like is the, is the message of this movie don't touch Jews I, I, anyway so well he didn't want to cure him he's uh, magical oh, right, <laughs> he didn't right. want to well, just like oh, free cure him for free right yeah. Yeah. rabbi starts to tell the kid about being brainwashed to which Abe responds am I being detained <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me if you're a cop <laughs> <laughs> Well, his actual answer is basically turns to the rabbi. He's like, "Have you ever gotten down on your knees and begged your religion to be wrong?" And the rabbi's like, "No." And he's like, "Checkmate, bitch." Also, the rabbi's spot on. The rabbi gives this great speech. Oh where yeah. He's like, you know, sometimes when you're vulnerable and you're in a bad place and you're feeling lonely, people are going to try to take advantage of that, and you're going to think that they're telling you true things, but in actuality, you're just emotionally vulnerable and looking for that connection. And he really gives a good description of how all fucking religions <laughs> right. <work. laughs> Again, it's that moment of, like, intellectual sobriety on the part of the writer where he just immediately moves past it and goes back to crazy town. <laughs> right, right. right. Maybe they well, he basically says, wrong. you haven't gotten on your knees and said, what if I'm wrong? Pretty please let me be wrong. And so the rabbi's like, well, can't argue with that. He's Mr. Sugar. Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so bad. <laughs> that you could go down the list of all the Pokemon names and Noah could recite you more accurate pronunciations <laughs> than any of the Jews do of Yiddish in this movie. Oy vi. <laughs> Pikachu. <laughs> Latka. <laughs> so now we get... The, I guess the deprogrammer that we talked about before. The the rabbi can't do it, so they bring in the wolf. They call fucking <laughs> <laughs> Harvey Keitel. Yeah, and, and they bring in the deprogrammer to deprogram him, and he's apparently from the south of Judea. On account of he got this hair accent. <laughs> hey there, my name's Moshe G. G. <laughs> I was like, what? So he, t so the the the, the Southern Baptist uh, fucking you. deep programmer sits down, and he's like, and he instantly. This movie turns from whatever it was into the Exorcist what? from the perspective <laughs> of the Exorcist. <laughs> yeah, he's like. You need prayer. Also, your mother sucks cocks in hell. I was just like, oh, this kid's head's going to start to turn 360 any moment. But but then he ends up, okay, so the kid turns to the deprogrammer guy and he says, I just had a vision of you getting in a car accident. God wants me to pray in the name of Jesus to heal your leg. So he does. And, and his leg heals. It works. <laughs> and here's the fucking way that this guy plays it. He goes... Damn it, now there's a burning itch just went through my leg. Wait, it's better now. Hold on a second. <laughs> that, real, that is, that is moment for moment at speed the performance. He does it. My goodness yeah. gracious, I'm all better. Yeah. Bye bye. He just jumps up and does a hundred yard hurdles really fast. Yeah. He's good. And of course, the dad says, Hey, you know, we have a girl in a wheelchair for just such an occasion. Let me wheel her out. And holy fuck, he's going to cure the girl with MS. That's yes. what's about to happen. Right. And 
I just want to point out that one of our listeners just made a, like a really, really brave post about how bad her MS has gotten and how she's not ashamed of it and she's willing to come out. This is Leslie and she's a really, really brave. She did this thing. She put it out on Facebook. And to watch this movie at literally the day I saw that video oh, where it's like, boof, you're better. I was like, man, I bet Leslie sure wishes she could be in this movie and just have some nine-year-old be like, pretty please, and then just walk around. If only she was a Christian. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so this actually happens. He magically cures <laughs> yep. the fucking MS and Reg is like, yeah, thanks. Um, but any reason God couldn't have set this up earlier? Or like, <laughs> right. just not well, crippled says, me. Just you want to wrestle now? And I wrote in my notes, do you want to fuck now? Cause I know some people with MS who will fuck the shit out of you to get rid of it. I mean, for fuck's sake, the least you could do is blow the kid. He just cured your MS. But yeah, you know, this also will- the deprogrammer's like, how did you learn to do this? And fucking Abe is just like, oh, you don't learn to heal people, silly. You just start making shit up. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it works. No, but that's that's one of those accidentally honest moments of this movie. So, and now we get this incredible conversation, right? This is where the cousin in New York, or the uncle in New York, rather, calls dad back in South Dakota to tell him about the miracle healings. But you know how Jews are always ignoring medical miracles and healings and stuff if it means they have to admit Jesus is the Messiah. Yeah, this is a strong skeptic right here. Randy's got a thing or two to learn from Micah. <laughs> I think the first thing they should try doing is not using a deprogrammer who's crippled. <laughs> that, seems, <laughs> that seems like the first control they can apply to this. <laughs> but he explains that Micah has magic powers... Cured everyone, and now everyone's a Christian. And my favorite line from this is he goes, he, he sa- explains that he's, you know, cured everyone, and Micah's still mad and upset. Like, even though he's like, yeah, he cured my daughter's MS, Micah's like, but is he Jewish, motherfucker? Is he Jewish? <laughs> I just wanted him to tear his shirt open again. So. <laughs> 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 Start singing dreidel for no reason. <laughs> so they end this scene by being like, you know, he's like, what I really need is to understand the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'll go to my Christian neighbors and figure that out. So they do, because it's what they ended the last scene talking about. It's what they must, must start the next scene talking about. Well, what's amazing is Stephen opens the door and Micah goes, I need some answers. And to be fair, I open all of my conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start. Seems like I like it. It's direct. And again, what's so amazing about this crazy movie is that the like other side of this is, look, the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't real anymore what (laughs) there were people who got filled with god fire and they could talk in dead languages and magically heal people but we there's a time limit (laughs) okay is what we believe so the 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 the, uh, micah the jewish dad comes in and he goes he turns to the christian dad he goes what is the baptism in the name of the holy spirit and the Christian dad goes, that's an odd question coming from a Jew. I'm like, no, that's just an odd question. (laughs) That's an odd question no matter what. (laughs) There's no circumstance, no person from whom you could be like, "Ah, I was expecting that question. Also, this is where Micah, so we learned that uh, Paul has been secretly baptizing himself in the Holy Spirit, which may be my second name for jerking off after mastering the gift. I'm just saying, (laughs) it might be my second name. But yeah, he's been baptizing himself in the Holy Spirit, and him and his dad start to argue, to which Micah goes... (laughs) I hate to break up the love fest here, but I need to figure out how this Christianity thing works to fix my kid. (laughs) (laughs) I also love this line as the, uh, because, okay, so the dad and the son are arguing because like now the son is, is believing in the wrong type of Christianity or whatever. And the, the Jew turns to the Christian dad and he goes, huh, I didn't think you Christians filtered truth for your kids. I thought you were all free thinkers. Said nobody ever. <laughs> yeah, he turns to him and he's like, really? Ask my kid about dinosaurs. They're a lie planted by Satan. See? See? <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of filtering. <laughs> by the way, at the end, he turns to the son and he goes, remember, Paul, fathers know best. Yeah. And I just want to say fathers know best is my gay dad's 2016 remake of Leave It to Beaver. <laughs> Le- leave it to cock. Oh, oh okay. All right. yeah, no, that's good. That's good. <laughs> So he gets home and he tells his wife, because they got two books, right? So he's got one book about the New Testament, one book is the New Testament, and the other book is this book about 
whatever this weird offshoot of assembly of God Christianity or, or whatever. So he, he has to split that up with his wife. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay, I'm reading the the fucking Testament sequel. You figure out the antidote to baptism. We'll <laughs> double team this. <laughs> And they read. We get more reading. Another reading scene. montage. Yeah. But anyway, he read the whole New Testament. She goes, what do you think of it? And he said, it's impossibly stupid and boring. Like anyone who read the whole New Testament in a night would say. But it, except not because it's a stupid fucking movie. No, he's got notes. He's got little sticky notes yeah. all throughout. The, well, the he's New memorized. Testament. As we will learn, he has <laughs> memorized the Bible. Because <laughs> moments later, he's going to just give people chapter and verse. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so it, it, the the wife is all expectant and hopeful. She goes, wait a minute, are you telling me you think that Jesus is God's son? And the husband goes, no, I know he is. Again, actual lines. And I wanted him so badly to jump in the air and for the screen to freeze. <laughs> <laughs> and then they fucking direct quote, God's not dead. They literally just reenact the scene where he's like, whose side are you on? And she's like, I'm on God's side. God's not dead. He's alive. <laughs> I wanted the newsboys to appear in this movie more badly than I've ever wanted anything in my goddamn life. So, yeah. So the mom admits that she was secretly Christian the whole time. And if you, you have to really want to know that or turn your volume way up to figure that out. But that's what she's saying. And at this, at this point, like I was just writing in my notes, like this is not even funny. This is just disgusting. I mean, if we wanted to, we could make fun of the people's physical appearances and triumph of the wills. But at a certain point, it's just disgusting. You just got to back off for a second and realize what you're looking at. You're looking at a movie that somebody made about fixing a Jew. Yeah, this oh, is this fuck. is for people who watched Merchant of Venice and didn't like the whole sympathetic part of it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. How come he gets that speech about whether or not they bleed? I ain't never seen no Jew bleed. You know, none of them died in 9-11. To be fair, they, they acknowledge that Jews are funny. That's the only positive comment this movie has about the Jews is that they're funny. And Hell they fucking, yeah. they beat that horse till it is well and dead. Yeah, but Mama's pup. She might as well just like walk out of the wall like Anne Frank and like high five a Nazi. Like, yeah, I'm on board now. I'm cool. <laughs> God, the rest are it. in there. <laughs> <laughs> so now they go over to the Christian's house to let them know that they're all Jesus up. Yeah, and uh -huh. honestly, this might as well be the ending of fucking Christmas Carol. He's, he might as well be like, boy, boy, what day is it? Uh, oh yes. Is it is it possible the Holy Spirit did it all in one night? Oh, my God. Yeah, no, it, it, because, like, every time we've seen this character up until this point, he's been angry, he's been yelling, he's been screaming, and this is the first time where he has shown any kind of happiness, and it's just, like, fucking joy. It's a bullion to joy. At Jewish apostasy joy. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That kind of joy. And so the dad is like, oh, or the Christian dad's like, oh, that's great, Micah. Have you reconciled with Abe? He goes, yes, and with Jesus. Yeah. And this is the great moment where we learn how great, how like, oh yeah, you get inducted to a cult, you get inducted hard, because he's like, where can we get water baptized? I read in the book we need to get dunked in water, and he's like, oh, you don't need to do that. There's been religious moderation over the years, and he's like, hey, I don't give a fuck what you think. I just jumped on the crazy train, and I want this thing at full fucking speed. Yeah. You hear me? You hear me, Andy Dooley? <laughs> Well, I love it, too, because, like, yeah, right, he's been a Christian for an hour and a half, and he's like, no, your your version of Christianity is wrong. And I'm like, man, he's nailing it. He's got this <laughs> shit down pat. Right, and this is where Micah says, it took my 12-year-old to teach me the truth. Said nobody who says something reasonable ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever. I have a 12-year-old sister. She tells me that Bratz dolls are cool and that she likes texting and Snapchat. That is what I have learned from 12-year-old. And then, and then smooth-faced dad's wife refers to the fucking crazy snake-talking, prostolatory faith healers as the charismatics. Yeah, Talk, and that a nice little... Which is, which is the <laughs> kindest word for bullshit artist I think anyone has ever <laughs> conceived right. of. Yeah. Me and Moishu were once in a, like one of those public halls when we got approached by a cult member. And when we asked her if she was in a cult, she said, cult is just short for culture. That's the second creepiest <laughs> phrase we've heard next to charismatics now. <laughs> Well, this conversation is amazing, too, because the dad's like, you know, those uh, crazy people who talk in tongues and shit, they're just so uh, arrogant and prideful. And he goes, well, and the mom's like, well, what if they're not arrogant and prideful? What if they're really just that awesome? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly 
that exactly the, what I have. Account. Where's the WBC? Is that close? Can we get? <laughs> Let's do this right. It's not right. that we have a better religion than the Jews. It's just that we have an actual savior. Actual <laughs> line. <laughs> actual line from this movie. Wow. And so now Dad has to pray on it for a minute about whether they should go to this Assembly of God church and get full immersed baptized. But he apparently he can't pray if you watch, so he has to go off and do it on his own. And yes, that is now become the central conflict in this movie is whether or not full immersion baptism or sprinkling counts. Yeah. Sure, you're Christian, but are you the right kind of Christian? (laughs) Exactly, exactly. We've got to whittle that down with the rest of this film. So now everybody's hanging out waiting for Abe to show up. Apparently the New York Jews are going to drive him to South Dakota. Right. Uh, Abe is back in South Dakota, not, by the way, at hospitals curing people. No. Uh, in case anyone's wondering <laughs> what Abe's doing, he's not at hospitals curing people. So just reminder, everything that Abe does from this moment on is Awful. evil. Is not Pure being evil. at a hospital curing <laughs> right. people, right? Uh, so they decide, and luckily, nearby, there's a Jews for Jesus church. Huh. So everyone's <laughs> Jewish when you think about it. And this was the weirdest leap because they were like, well, you know, Christians are just Jews who don't not anymore <laughs> so uh, i want a bar mitzvah and the movie's like great we've explained it yeah why not <laughs> also there's like a solid 20 minutes of 12 year olds flirting with each other <laughs> from this point on That's- yeah the 20 of the last 28 minutes of this movie yeah the parents are like literally just pushing these kids together. It's the most <laughs> uncomfortable thing you've ever seen. Why don't you go run at Sarah penis first? Yeah, huh? <laughs> the dad's like, "Oh, you think you'd like Sarah?" And he might the way he says it, he might as well like put two fingers up and like do the cunnilingus thing through it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's so uncomfortable. <laughs> it's, it's so fucking weird. If the last thirty minutes of this movie were just Chucky Dad being like, B. B, B, E, M. Yeah, it's, it's bad. Bad news. Again, parents. crazy billionaire ending right there. So now we cut to the church waiting for the big baptism. I just love that the opening line here is Paul going, well, this will be interesting. I just wrote in my notes, bet you a million fucking dollars. Million dollars against. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, and this is also, I guess, where we we have to establish, because apparently we're going to get all throughout this entire movie without knowing who Paul was going to fuck later, so apparently he gets to fuck the MS cousin. Oh, and when we find out why she's in South Dakota, um, Micah, Jew dad, tells his wife, oh, Uncle Dave, now that that they're all converted, oh, Uncle Dave wasn't going to leave her in New York, as in, with all the Jews. Uh, yeah, right. Because <laughs> God knows you can't be a Christian in New York. We will fucking get you. We'll come after you <laughs> if you're a Christian in New York. <laughs> and the fact that they want to move from New York to South Dakota is one of the more offensive things in this movie. Yeah, yeah. It's very, and, and one of the harder to believe, including the magic fight between Jesus and Harry Potter. And yeah. Um, so we're here for the bar mitzvahs, and both of these kids apparently are having bar mitzvahs, the, the, uh, Paul and, and Abraham now, because who the hell gives a shit? Now everyone can play bar mitzvah. Because the actual quote is, bar and bat mitzvahs aren't just for Jewish kids, it's for everybody. No, no, it's just <laughs> for Jewish kids. <laughs> That's how it works. And the priest, the rabbi, whatever the hell this guy is, that's the, the guy who looks like the blobfish disguised as Herman Munster, who leads this whole ceremony, is one of the most odd-looking human beings that has ever been captured on film. I wrote, this rabbi looks like someone kissed a frog, and it turned into a rabbi, but got stuck halfway through the transformation. <laughs> His eyes are looking at it in at least three directions at all times. So... Now it's the actual, like, bar mitzvah service itself, which, okay, there's two things that we need to talk about at this bar mitzvah service. The first is that the bar mitzvah service itself consists of three people going up and making nice speeches about the bar mitzvah people. They do not read from the Torah. Nope. They don't look at the Torah. They don't talk about the Torah. They just say, Paul's a great guy. So is Abe. He's got magic powers. Don't worry about it. We'll talk about that later. Oh, and then also there's a girl person for some reason. 
<laughs> but the second thing, and actually more important than how crazy the service is, is the positioning and display of the Torah that these Christians got their hands on. <laughs> they have laid it out wide open on an altar facing the audience of this congregation. They might as well use it as a carpet. There's, there's a, nothing less realistic than their presentation of the Torah in this movie. It looks like a model home Torah that's just like <laughs> false on the back. It, lo- yeah. it looks like they like spent way more money to make like a resin model of a Torah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> And so the movie continues to not be over for about 20 minutes as, as we go one after the other. Well, actually, I'm sorry. It's not even one after the other because the, the dad, the, uh, the, 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 the Jewish dad uh, gives two monologues in a row. He comes up, gives a monologue, goes back, sits down, and then they say, speaking now is the same guy who just spoke. And he gets up and he talks again. Yeah, that's just bad stagecraft, people. That's just bad stagecraft. Well, and I love it. He opens his thing up. He's like, you know, in an almost bizarre set of circumstances, I stopped being Jewish. I'm like, almost bizarre? <laughs> this included miracle healing an MS patient and a fucking vision of Jesus winning at Quidditch. How <laughs> fucked up does it have to get before you're going full bizarre, dude? <laughs> yeah, this is where he turns and he says, Paul is a man now. He has the heart of a lion and the gentleness of a dove. Those are actual <laughs> lines! He says, a man after God's own heart. To which I wrote, a hilarious new romantic comedy by Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> so then they do the speech for the girl. Very casually explain that she was magically healed of her <laughs> it's MS. just kind of off Very, to the side. I've been to a lot of bar and bat mitzvahs, and usually they're like, Michelle, who loves gymnastics and is a great friend to all those around her, that's how they do the Michelle, who was cured of MS the other day, <laughs> and is a great friend to all of the... And everyone in the congregation is like, oh, cool. Oh, yeah, no, she was. She nice. must have been the one, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and like, and and this is where we get the great news that her dad gets to be the college's janitor, so she can yeah. stay in South Dakota. Hey, King Janitor, <laughs> not just janitor, King Janitor. I just wrote la 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 la. Jews aren't janitors. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and now a character that we've essentially never met. This is the MS mom. the The multiple sclerosis girl's mom comes up to introduce Abraham, and I'm like. First of all, I'm like, like, why are we hearing from her? And then it's just, I, the rest of my notes are just pop filter and increasingly large font. <laughs> it's true. But yeah, her basic thing is, this is Abe. He has healing powers, no big deal. But the important thing, the important thing is that he was a Christian Jew Christian before it was cool. <laughs> and so then they bring up a guy for a blessing of some sort. Again, a character we've never met. Who, right, who sings the Kali Ma song from Indiana Jones. <laughs> and I can't, I'm sorry to keep bringing up the audio, but while he's singing, the background music does not shut up or match or st- tone down at all. So for a, like a solid 40 seconds, we have this guy singing in a different key than the background music. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, to be fair, though, they do save the music right here at the end, I thought, when they went to the shofar fanfare <laughs> yes. what? everyone blows celebratory shofars which is not a thing <laughs> at all and then everyone waves weird flags which and be real with me on this moishi have you ever seen those flags anywhere fuck no <laughs> no, they're blowing shofars there's a flag with a menorah all I fucking wrote was they don't know what a fucking bar mi- the, the Philippines, South Dakota math, the holocaust <laughs> Jesus Tim Tebow's career, bar mitzvahs shit this movie doesn't know what is it's all- shit this movie just fucking made up <laughs> if there was just a guy with a swastika flag in the back just like this is part of it right I saw a bunch of these in old photos with Jews they just start carrying around chairs with nobody in them like <laughs> <laughs> It's all decorated like an ironic Jewish-themed party from, like, Oklahoma State or something like that. (laughs) This movie is like Blood Diamond. All the actors had been white and in blackface, (laughs) but the only source material they used was Cannibal Holocaust. (laughs) This movie is the Holocaust of Holocausts, not just (laughs) of movies. 
<laughs> well, see, now, originally I was thinking about trying to come up with some kind of Holocaust based one to six million rating system to give this movie. But whatever I would come up with would pale in comparison to the culturally oblivious anti-Semitism of this movie. So instead, I figured I could try to capture the horror of this film by asking you this. What is the worst thing that a person could ask a Jew that would still be better than, hey, you want to watch the unexpected bar mitzvah with me? <laughs> I'll give the only question I've ever been asked, uh, which is, so, like, can you see your nose? <laughs> 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 yes, I can. <laughs> I, I, I can see mine. Can't everybody see their nose? Is that, is that a thing? Yeah, but, like, okay, it. so let me rephrase. Can you not see your nose? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> to which the answer wow. for me is no. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say, uh, do you know how smart Bobby Fischer was? He was <laughs> he was never wrong about anything, was he? He was with the chess. and He saw so many moves ahead, all the way to 9-11. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with, where'd you get your tattoo? You don't see a lot of old people with tattoos. <laughs> Pretty cool. You ride a motorcycle? <laughs> you were number 88. That's so weird. <laughs> oh. Like Kaepernick. <laughs> no, Kaepernick but good try, but good try, Eli. That's yes, he not, is. He's Kaepernick. He's 88. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> I'll see what I can do. Well, that's it. We made it through the entire fucking thing. It's like getting liberated from a concentration camp. I'm sure I know exactly what those Jews felt like now having watched this movie. Uh, so, Moise, you can't thank you enough for uh, for still being friends with us after asking you to do this. It's, that's, it was, it's a wild ride, but here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's awfully presumptive for me to assume that we're still uh, friends after that, but I certainly hope well, all so. Good. Certainly all hope good. So. Thanks for having me. It was a blast. Awesome. And while that does it for our review of the unexpected bar mitzvah and thus the high point of my life, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to give you a reason to soldier on to next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Time changer. I was so worried. I thought, like, no matter what we do after this week, it's going to be such a disappointment. And then you sent me this preview and I was so fucking happy. Oh, yes. It's, it's the uh, touching tale of a man about to publish a book about how you don't need Jesus to be good. So his colleague, who disagrees, sends him forward in time to mm -hmm. show him what happens in a world without God. <laughs> Brought to us by the Cristiano Brothers. Oh, yeah. Fire, the yeah. makers of my all-time favorite yeah. film. They Go ahead. Captain Steubing. <laughs> yes, yes, they exciting. did. Yeah. Well, it's, it was because like, when I watched the beginning of this preview, it actually looks like super high quality and everything. And there's actors that I kind of recognize and stuff like that. And I'm like, gee, Eli, are you sure? And then the whole plot sort of <laughs> unfolds in the preview. And I'm like, oh, he's sure. <laughs> oh, he's very, very sure. They, they use a time machine <laughs> to show him gay people. That's, like, <laughs> that's, that's the premise of this movie. Amazing. They just shoot him into the village. Yeah, right. <laughs> So with that to look forward to, we'll bring episode 57 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Moishi for hanging out with us today, and an equally huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode, which you can download on their new audio RSS feed, which makes it like super easy, so it's just like in your thing already, and you don't have to go to a special app or anything to get it. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes, and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy the show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following the links on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard darn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Holocaust bagels. <laughs> Holocaust bagels is my new business. Nobody fucking steal it. Don't you bitches dare steal it. Stephen Hawking died of ALS because Abraham's a lazy asshole. <laughs> Rebecca died of multiple sclerosis because they never bothered to confirm that shit with a doctor. It was self-reporting, people. Come on. <laughs> Micah finally told Abraham how we did 9-11. <laughs> <laughs>
Pick up a chair and put the Jew in the chair. Holocaust bagels. They're all burned. God. I went to school for Jews. This came out so poorly. I'm a hypno rapist by trade. <laughs> Please make I'm a hypno rapist by trade our outtake. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle in a Thunderstorm LLC, copyright 2016, all rights reserved.